Well, I thought I'd get out. It's 77 degrees here in Cowtown, and I decided I wasn't gonna cook dinner today, Sunday. I even had some chili and cornbread sitting on the counter I was gonna make, but I'll make that tomorrow. So I'm sitting here at my favorite chicken place, Lisa's Chicken, and um, I thought I'd get me some chicken. So whenever I get the chicken, um, I'm thinking about finding somewhere to park and we can watch the traffic go by and we can chat, talk. See what y'all are doing today on this Sunday, 77 degrees. It looks like the next few days, it's gonna just get warmer and warmer and warmer here. It's gonna be like almost 90 degrees come Wednesday. And it's still February. So you don't have to have summer in Texas to get summer temperatures but someone said on the internet that we were gonna get another um, freezing temperature next week, but I checked my weather bug and it's not on there. So I don't know what they were talking about, but anyway, let me wait in line here and then whenever I get my chicken, we'll um, find a shady spot or a sunny spot and watch the traffic go by. Who knows, we might even see a train. Okay, I got my chicken. Got some shade over here, so let me scoot the seat back. Now let's see what the chicken looks like. I got the mix, so. Okay, I got a wing. Got chicken leg. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get crumbs in my seat. Mm. Don't you love fried chicken? Chicken's right out the fryer. It's too hot to eat. Turn off my engine. I had my money in my lap. I had to put it up. Okay, I'm pretty sure this small one is going to be the gravy. So, let's see. This one's cool, so this has got to be the coleslaw. So, let's hold this one with the gravy. I'm going to get a bite of this coleslaw. Got to get your vegetables, right? I love coleslaw. Look at that. That look good. I wish I had some pepper. I'd put some black pepper on it. Mm hmm. That's really good. I want to show you what is parked next to me. I can't. I'm going to have to turn my camera off to. But anyway, there's a black bet right 
right next to me. Years ago, story. <laughs> Years ago, when I was self-employed, um, I had a customer that I went to their house to do clean their carpet. I owned a carpet cleaning business and I went there and they were my regular customers and they lived in a very nice part of um, Dallas Fort Worth called the Colony. Not the Colony. I forget, but if it comes to me, I'll tell you. But anyway, her husband owned a Corvette dealership. There it goes. I had to watch it. Um. Corvettes are very pretty cars. Very sought after i'll say as far as sports cars and people would love to have one if they could afford it but when i was in my 20s my supervisor when i was a quality control technician he had a corvette my supervisor did And I was talking to him about Corvettes. And I haven't even got my star and my soda yet. Found somewhere to put this coleslaw in. And, you know, he's bragging about them and really loves Corvettes. And he could afford one because he's my supervisor. And he was single in his early 20s. And. had his college degree and you know I think it was white the best I can remember is white but I told him I'd never ridden in a Corvette I had no clue about what he's talking about I thought they were cool looking so he was like okay well um sometimes whenever I can leave at the same time y'all leave. We'll go out and I'll give you a ride around the block. I'm like, okay, that'd be fun. So, one evening, him and some of the other people we worked with were out in the parking lot. And, you know, he's giving rides to anybody that wants them. And... He's like, well, Peggy, if, if you're not in a hurry to go home tonight, he's like, I'll take you for that ride around the block and let you see what the ride is like. I remember it was dark. It was kind of in the evening right before dark, right after dark in that time period. Um, and... That's whenever I realized you shouldn't get in the car with everybody because some people don't know how to drive. So, he scared the crap out of me in that car. And, um, you know, because he drove way too fast on a public street. And... I didn't tell him, but I kept that information for later in my life that those are the roughest riding cars 
most uncomfortable ride, bumpy ride, is like they don't have any shocks at all. That I'd ever been in. And I was in my 20s in, and I'd been in several cars with my parents, you know, and cousins and uncles and stuff. They had cars, and I'd been in a car with lots of people driving. And, um, needless to say, that was the last time I ever got in a car with him. But, yeah, I've always been disappointed with the Corvette and the ride that comes along with that expense that you pay for those kind of cars because you know you can almost buy a house for what you can pay for a vet well I don't know now but back then you could see if my chickens cooled off enough to eat Still a little warm, but not too warm. I don't hear any trains coming, but from here, the trains always go from the right, which is down towards downtown, and it comes this way. It's always from downtown out. And it comes right down um, Highway 287. So, about y'all but I'm getting warm get another drink of my Dr. Pepper and it makes pretty good today I just love fountain drinks don't you love fountain drinks over bottled drinks or canned drinks Unless they don't mix it right. And that just depends on where you get it. And if they got the taste buds to mix it properly. But today it's mixed really good. I can also give y'all an update on Charlie. Bless his little heart. You know, Charlie is over 110 years old for dog years to people years. And I had to take him to the vet a little over a week ago because he wasn't holding his food down. And So he's on three different medicines. He has been on Pedialyte. He also has been on Pepto-Bismol. He 
He hasn't really thrown up or had really bad diarrhea almost a week yesterday or a week today. But he had one little issue this morning because I think I just gave him too much rice and chicken. And um, he just puked up a little bit of it. But I'm going to cut his food back. Not a lot, but I can't give him but like a fourth a cup of chicken and rice at a time. Or he does get sick. Charlie doesn't play anymore. He doesn't jump around and run. Um, he'll start to to let me know he could if he wanted to, which I get tickled at. And, you know, Charlie never bites you, but he'll play around with your hand like he's gonna bite you when he's playing and getting all frisky. And he's done that a couple times in the last few days just to let me know he is feeling better. And I thought that was amazing because as soon as he did it, you know, I've studied dog language and what they mean when they do things so long, so I know what Charlie thinks. I knew that meant that he was letting me know he was feeling better, so. You know, feeling better for, the, for what he was feeling. And, you know, he's still old. He's still got problems and Charlie's been on gabapentin since he was like, I don't know, three or four months old. I've got a little picture of him when he was still really small with a cat bell on his collar. And the only reason we ever put that on there is because when he had a seizure, he would shake and we could hear that bell. And as soon as I heard it, I said, Charlie's having a seizure and we would run to him. And, um... So his doctor, you know, let me know that, you know, she is just amazed that Charlie has lived a full life having seizures and being on medication his entire life. So anybody that you know that takes gabapentin, I have read and it is addicting and uh, a lot of medications are, but Charlie can't abuse them. He's always been on the same dose, 100 milligrams twice a day. You know, I keep them in a Monday through Sunday box. I put two in each box so I can look and tell if I didn't give it to him. So, that's the way I do my own medicine. I look and see if I took my Thursday morning medicine. If it's still in there, I know I didn't take it. And that's the way Charlie does his medicine. So, gabapentin will allow you to have a full life. Even though you might take it your full life. You know, gabapentin is for so many different things. Suicidal thoughts, depression, seizures. Um, it's, it, it's been used for so many things. So I am a big fan. Even with my high blood pressure. When my blood pressure was almost 200, and they kept telling me at the ER that it's just from anxieties. My son being a paramedic uh, trained person and his, uh, my daughter-in-law has some and his experience with that in his house, he told me to take one and I did. And it did drop my blood pressure down to a level that I didn't have to go to the hospital. So even though I don't, I didn't have anything for 
the high blood pressure for anxieties. Um, I did have Charlie's medicine. So I only took two of them two different days in the last few months. But they do work. So, you know, if you've got high blood pressure and you don't even know you have anxieties, because mine was definitely a subconscious anxiety. And I wouldn't have even guessed that would have worked, but it did. So, uh, yeah, gabapentin. Um, can be used for so many things. So, yeah. So anyway, Charlie has been a little under the weather as far as age and um, if I could just keep him on rice and chicken you know I won't even go back to his kibbles I've been giving his kibbles to the cats because they out of cat food and Charlie's got a big old bag And if Charlie ever goes back to his uh, Perino one or whatever that is, Alpo that he likes so much, I'll just get him some more, you know. So I don't want it to get stale. One of the reasons I'm eating up here in the parking lot. So I don't take this back home and Charlie will watch me eat it. I love chicken legs. If I can get a chicken leg, I will, but if I can't, I'll eat any of them. Man, that is so good. That is a good meal. Very good meal. Uh, so, if y'all give Charlie just a little prayer, he could use it. You know? It's kind of stressful on me because um, I just wish I could do more for him. And I don't quite know what else to do. I'm going to pour this gravy on top of my mashed potatoes. Ooh, look at that. Mm, not too much. Get another spoon over here. And Just love mashed potatoes and gravy. I'm gonna get that gravy down inside there, all, all the potatoes. Mm. But yeah, I ain't heard no train yet. But they do come on Sunday. And 
that's so good. take this home and I'll have enough for dinner too it's already almost three o'clock we get one more bite out of here the coleslaw this is the best coleslaw mm. You know, some coleslaw. Oh, a bug. Got bugs. Winter's over. <laughs> but anyway, coleslaw. Some places is real dry. They don't put enough mayonnaise stuff in it, but some of them is too juicy. Put too much in there. This is the wing. Not much meat on the wing, but it is tasty. Mm. Ah. Okay, so thank y'all for eating with me. Thank you for letting me talk to you about Charlie. And um, I gotta head back to the house. I don't like to leave him too long, but he is in his nap time, so he won't wake up really till about five or six, and then he might want something to eat. He might not, but as long as I keep them in small portions, we'll be doing okay. Adios from North Texas, and goodbye from Cowtown. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye now.